Hi everybody, kia ora, my name's Asher Anderson and I'm here today with my lovely friend Barbara Belger. Um, we have decided to have some meaningful conversations about um, a lot of what's happening in our country and the world at the moment and our concerns um, around where this is all heading. Um, so Barbara, <laughs> welcome, really nice to, to be having another meaningful conversation with you again today. Always nice, always nice to be with you, Asha. Thank you. Kia ora, everyone. So maybe just a little bit about us um, before we get started, just to give a bit of context. Um, you know, we're sharing our own personal thoughts um, and opinions. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a volunteer, a long time volunteer, um, and I have a very strong interest in human rights. Um, and, um, and that human rights be respected and that each of us is um, afforded the respect um, and dignity that we deserve and that we are entitled to. Um, so I think that what's happening has really touched a lot of people on this very, very human level. Um, and many of us have just been watching um, and just observing kind of things as they're unfolding. I'm not really feeling very empowered to do much about it. And I'd say my, myself included. And I've just been listening to the people in my community and watching the media um, and the narratives that are coming through. And it's just making me more and more uncomfortable um, to the point now where I really feel that we need to start standing up for our human rights. Um, yeah, I'm a very empathetic person, I, I, you know, and I, for me, this is the way that I navigate the world is by relating to people um, and listening to their stories. I think people's individual voices are incredibly important that we are able to um, respect their experiences um, and not sweep them under the carpet um, because really somebody's story is, is the same as somebody in your family's story, you know, and, and respecting somebody's rights is really in turn is respecting your own rights. So that, that's, that's where I come from um, in regards to this. And, and I really feel that we need to um, rise above and respect the diversity of opinions and values and not try to assimilate others to our way of thinking because we think we know best um, so yeah and um, Barbara I'm just I'm so glad that you're somebody um, you know in my community of people and that we can um, you know work together and play together and, and enjoy life together and really that we um, can be there for other people during this time and and have these kind of conversations because um, it's just so important yeah very very important and I think that you know, even at this point, it is important to point out that we we are not always of the same opinion, uh, but we always talk. We always we always um, <clears throat> employ each other as sounding board and uh, and 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 ask for feedback and or ask for for comment and. And, and because we're both, I think what, we're very similar, we're both critical thinker, very empathetic and uh, critical thinker. And I really, really applaud you, Asha, for, for standing up and actually having a voice. It is, I think it is very, very important. I, I really strongly feel that this, this world that is uh, happening and unfolding and, and um, happening at the moment is, belongs to the courageous ones uh yeah so that is and this that's the kind of courage that comes from a place of compassion and empathy and uh and deep sharing it requires a lot of courage to actually be here speak up be vulnerable um yeah and it's also the world to be honest that i want to create for for my children for my little grandson you know and not this segregation and we yet have to learn to yet ha hate another class of people and whatever that's stuff of the past really stuff of the past so when we move into that new into the world that we want uh 
um, human rights are self-understood. It's like common sense. We just know it. We just know in our deep inner self, once we're all healed and once we're all complete, we just know what is right. Don't, we don't have to have a written uh, and a law enforcement and somebody to fine us if we don't follow the human rights. It is, it's so clear that you, if you lock people away and force them uh, to, to, I don't know, to put a bandage in front of a coffee field, I call it, in front of their face, which reduces uh, or changes your kind of breathing and it, it, you know, it changes your immune system. It's so clear that it's not right. It is a choice. If you, if you, it's a matter of choice. If you think it protects you or you protect others, then choice. But but forcing anyway. I'm I'm on fire. Let's let's go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So well, what we're what we're what we're hoping to do is we really would like to equip people with some information regarding their rights. Um, and encourage them to stand up for their rights and to stand up for the rights of others. Um, and so we're going to be looking at some of the um, international treaties um, and accords, as well as New Zealand's own Bill of Rights that clearly define what your rights are. Um, so, but today we're just going to open up, I suppose, the can of worms um, and, uh, and begin looking at, at the Bill of Rights uh, in the next video. So let's just maybe get started with a bit of a discussion around what we see happening. Um, you know, what, what we see happening with all of these measures, these COVID-19 um, Health Act measures that are being uh, implemented and forced um, upon us because there's a lot of um, side effects, you know, at for very, very predictable um, outcomes for some of these measures. And they're actually incredibly harmful. Um, and I think that that's something that we need to be talking about because um, the risk, the risk assessment, you know, of all of these harms that are coming out, it just, it's just shocking. It's actually shocking. Um, and the, the creation of division and anxiety. Um, you know, when, when you call in these kinds of measures where you're actually singling out people for their health choices um, and pressuring and using coercion to convince people and pressure people, it's incredibly wrong. There's, there's just something deeply, deeply wrong about that from my perspective. That's right, that's right. It's all, what I what I'm observing, what I'm hearing all around, um, and I I'm closely connected to quite a lot of people around the world. Um, is when when you talk about rights and and this deep feeling that you and I seem to have, uh, people quite often reply with yes, but you also have a human obligation or a duty, and. I agree. We have a we have a human obligation and a duty, and one of our one of our primary obligations is to inform yourself what is right for you. Uh, to inform yourself what you put into your body, food wise, air wise, water, and pharmaceuticals. And I see this in my work as a as a health uh, therapist. Uh, I work as a, you know, trauma-informed uh, resilience coach, and also as a health consultant. I see this over and over again, but people don't know the side effects of the pharmaceutical drugs they put into their body. Do you know that this leads to um, raising blood pressure? That this is correlated to Alzheimer's and dementia. People don't know. That I think is also a human obligation or a duty mm. to say no no more and so when I when so quite often in uh, the social media field uh, when people or people say just take this vaccination uh, I I what did they what did they say I played in sandpits and I didn't know the content in there or uh, I 
I had other vaccination. I didn't know the content. I'm, I'm doing such and such, and I don't know what's in it and all this. And I said, well, shame on you. Mm. That hasn't happened to me. That hasn't happened for a very long time. And maybe when I was a child and, and uh, believed everything everyone said. But uh, as soon as you grow, that's part of growing up to question and say, what is it? And why and, and, and be observant of yourself, you know, how how come I suddenly feel dizzy? How come we've suddenly got such a huge increase in autoimmune diseases worldwide and cancers worldwide? How come if our medical system has has improved so much? I must ask that question. That is a duty. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. No, due due diligence really, um, you know, and critical thinking is is something that is that is our responsibility and if you if you don't pick up that responsibility you are you are relegating it to somebody else to think on your behalf now if, right. you, if you're doing that you must have very very strong level of trust and confidence in in those decisions being made by those other people on your behalf now when we look at the situation that we're talking about here in regards to Vac vaccines or, or a, a form of um, treatment from companies that have paid out billions of dollars um, for fraud and bribery and misrepresentation of their products, my level of trust drops to close to zero. Um, you know, and I understand this will be different for every individual in terms of what, what you know, um, who, you who you trust, um, you know, which experts you're willing to follow. From my perspective, I haven't seen a doctor in more than 10 years. I follow, you know, natural health, nature. Nature is my medicine cabinet. And that works for me. It's always worked for me. So why then would I acquiesce to being pressured to take an experimental medical treatment um, from a company which has, you know, paid some of the biggest... Um, you know, biggest fines in history for medical fraud. Um, and this is not something people are being told, you know, and if you don't do your due diligence, you won't find out that information. That's not information that is going to appear on your television set, you know. Um, right. and the people pushing this treatment are not going to tell you that. And that's yeah. just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Um, so the ethics is completely lacking and when you understand that, then you'll be more prepared to actually look into things, um, you know, and do, you know, fulfill that obligation to yourself and others of, of actually knowing, um, knowing, knowing, having a deeper understanding of what's happening and, and who's, you know, who's pushing what. It's also, <clears throat> I mean, you know, the, the, um, um, the topic of, informed consent mm. uh, I think we we should touch on that and I can't I, I'm like you I haven't been to a to a doctor for over 10 years um, and it's worked for me so far so good <laughs> I've made it to 60 with without further damage um, and I'm not against medical uh, the medical profession I think yeah. the medical profession is phenomenal I uh, I kept saying that and seeing that in the earthquake work I did, you know, they were, they were fantastic. They, they, they're great with surgeries. They're great with emergency procedures. Um, I, I, I think even the medical profession themselves would admit that they have, they are time pressured. Mm -hmm. They are performance pressured and they, and because of that, they have lost what they came to the medical profession for, which is mm -hmm. caring for people. There's no time for caring. And that in itself is something maybe we can talk about another time. But the informed consent, if I, I you know, apparently, I don't know how suddenly we can perform medical procedures in an open field in a tent and, and put injection needles into people's arms without hygiene. I don't even know how that's possible, but okay. Um, but in those drive through, I am certain there is no time for informed consent. 
uh, that there is no an informed consent consent means that um, a, a doctor a lawyer in in Germany has written a very cool book uh, and I'm she's made it available as audio book per chapter so I'm listening to that and I'm sure that's not much different here informed consent means you get given all the details and you get given those details a day before so you can go back and discuss that with your dear ones then you, then then it's an informed consent and I can't see that happening because the, the, the general public who get their information from mainstream media nowhere on mainstream media do you actually talk about any of the side effects that any of these uh, well, you and I know because the first thing I do for for anything is looking into the safety data sheet and uh, and then if I see okay uh, a risk of myocarditis a risk of blood clotting then uh, and, and further um, without going too much into that today then then I, I can make an informed choice. But without knowing that, and then if you talk about it and, and, and people come back, usually if I ask them, have you considered that? And they come back, that's fear mongering. And I said, no, that is knowing. That is making an informed choice. Yeah. Let yeah. me just, let me just. Um... Okay. Yeah, in, uh, informed consent is so important uh, and it's completely been bypassed um, as far as I can tell. I mean, um, the Ministry of Health in an Official Information Act request has admitted that, the, um, that Pfizer did not test for transmission. So they were, not, they were not actually studying whether the vaccine prevented transmission or not. So, and, and it's, it's acknowledged that the vaccine does not prevent transmission of the virus. It's acknowledged that it doesn't prevent infection. Are people being told this when they roll up to have their vaccine? Um, let alone the side effects, as you say, of which there are many. Um, and these are recorded on, is it, is it on the Ministry, for the, um, Ministry of Health website? The, um, it's on the on the med MedSafe. MedSafe, on the MedSafe has, right. has all the data sheets for all the pharmaceutical products used here in New Zealand. And so you have to go to C and then find the Cominati uh, product uh, and then read through the data sheet. That's where I, I find it. That's where it's safest to find. Yeah, I was looking at the... Um the update until I think uh, updated until the 4th of September and there were many heart attacks on there um you know Bell's palsy where people's faces are partially paralyzed um, and the side effects uh, yes. uh, the adverse yes. reactions to the vaccine yeah. um and also I've, on medicine yeah I've had discussions with people who don't believe this is a thing because it's not being told to them. It's, it's there on the website, but you, the people aren't hearing about it in the media. Um, and yeah. any stories about adverse reactions are being censored on social media. We've seen that just this last week with Jacinda Ardern's post regarding side effects, where it appeared that there were 14,000 comments that were- so, so When I checked uh, last time, couple of days ago over 30,000 30, right? yeah and and I mean a lot of people will have <clears throat> commented uh you know there were comments in in both camps I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure but even just uh reading through those comments my, oh my goodness how can you carry on now I think what I heard yesterday I have to yet follow up I think the EMA, that's the European Medical, uh, it's the, the, the organization that gives or not approval to a, to a medical procedure. Mm -hmm. I think uh, the Pfizer vaccine runs out 22nd of December there. And, 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 and what, from my understanding, is no further approval. They have not. It stops. In, um, so that is something that to, to also know. 
Do you, um, do you think uh, that people are being told that, that this is an experimental trial? Do you think everybody who's receiving this vaccine is aware that they are part of a trial? I'm sure they're not. And I mean, likewise, with the, with the um, now, I mean, it's been running six months. So that what, that's what they call what I understand the, the uh, post marketing trial or, or whatever. And, and um, I've got to yet find that we will promise our viewers here that we will link, uh, we will put links in our comments, right? Uh, when somebody went to the through the you know scrutinizing actually the first results on the Pfizer website uh, of this trial that's been going on worldwide with people who've had the um, jab, and uh, and he it was clever enough to actually look into the details into the fine fine script, and and it has not passed on many accounts. It just has not. It just has not passed uh, and not kept the promise to the point even where now with Delta, it's almost certain that the current uh, stuff that they're, st that they're still offering does diddly dupes to Delta. It just doesn't. The variant has changed so much mm -hmm. and they will, the variants will still continue changing. So, so yeah, now, but coming back to obligation and, and rights and all that, People must know they have the right also to, to, to be informed from, you know, if our government calls themselves the, the single source of truth, people have the right to be informed from this single source of truth, what to do about their health. Mm -hmm. well, how can they improve their health? How, you know, stay away from, from the, the crappy bread that is so, sold in the supermarket and it's a, direct line to diabetes stay away from products with high fructose corn syrup that do, don't do any good to you you know what about uh exercising it's not just what whatever he said you know the little faux pas <laughs> stretching your legs and he made the faux pas saying spreading your legs it's not just that's just not enough on the exercise front what about mental mental my you know my Absolutely. Positivity. People are so afraid all the time. What about uh, treatment protocols that have been used very successfully in other countries that the government actually put into everyone's letterbox in some countries, you know, uh, and I'm not going into the mm -hmm. into the products today because mm -hmm. that is a whole different but, but the absolute absence, absence of any health, real health advice is just, it's alarming, really. Um, you know, it's vaccinate, vaccinate, vaccinate. And that's, that's all that they have to say. And uh, equally, you know, I mean, if we all can think back to how this all started, that we have to flatten the curve, that we have to make sure not to stretch our current health system. I don't know how you say that in English. Why have why has our health system not improved? Why mm. not improving our? I mean, we have less ICU units here everywhere in the world than we had last year, beginning of last year. They have all been reduced. Mm. So, so why why not look into that? Why not prepare our health system in a way that if an endemic or if something like this happens. Uh, that, that, that we're able to look after people. I mean, the same people who have refused to give us a wage increase or salary increase to nurses and staff at the same time as they say, we, we don't have the health of, that just doesn't compute. That just doesn't make sense. So, so talk about, you know, rights and obligations and um, yeah, anyway. All right, so I just would like to maybe sum up where we think this is heading and then maybe and then and then touch on a few principles that can really help us yeah. stay strong um, in this. So where is it all heading? What we've seen, you know, it started out with COVID and um, lockdowns and masks and then vaccines. And we're firmly on that. Now, now we've got the media participating in a campaign um, to vaccinate 90% of the population. 
voices, um, vo voices, dissenting voices, I suppose, voices that are for protecting our health choices, um, the independence of our health choices are completely absent from the media. Um, and we're being labeled as hesitant, you know, people who are hesitant. Well, I'll tell you right now, I'm not hesitant. I'm very resolute. Um, so there's, there's this real mind trickery going on, really, um, you know, and it's, it's very subtle for some people, they, they won't see it. Um, but many people are able to see the levels of coercion and how they're increasing and increasing. And yeah. what this does, and I, I, you know, what we can see this doing is actually creating such a division in our communities, in our families, in our society, where we have so much fear, people are starting to turn on each other, um, you know, and harass each other which is really, really very, a very sad state of affairs, but is very predictable, you know, with government using the language and the tactics that they're using. Um, and now we're reaching that point where we're talking about vaccine passports. And if we look at overseas, you know, in, in other countries overseas where this is being done, it's basically creating a new segregated society. And I mean, I, I don't even want to uh, uh, put the word out there. If everyone just thinks for a moment. So this current set of experimental product that they put into people's arms and veins and everywhere, because it, it doesn't prevent infection. It doesn't prevent spreading. We know that now. So what does the passport tell you? What, 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 it says nothing. It says nothing. It, all it says is that you were compliant, that you did, you rolled up your sleeve, you probably were wearing your mask all the time. That's what your passport mm -hmm. says. I think people have to be aware of that. That's right, yeah. And, and because it, it, whether or not I had the jab, if I go into a restaurant and uh, I, I can still spread any of these variants that will come up or the next virus or, or whatever, I, it doesn't say anything. It, it's only a, a piece of segregation. Similarly, the, um, the, in my view, the Tracer app, it says, it, what does it do? It does, it, you know, it, what does it do? It, it gives, a, it's a fantastic tool for, for tracing and tracking. And uh, I've, I've tried to find out, you know, what will happen to the data that is collected? Uh, who, who, who tells me what happens to that data? This is, I mean, our, our new industrial revolution is one of digitalization. We know that. Mm. So data is the new gold. Who knows what's, what's happening with that data that tells somebody my, my shopping habits and that I that I'm, uh, uh, you know, and my exercise habits and, and my leisure habits, and then some marketing company can use all that data and market just for that, um, which is what marketing companies do, but I haven't given my permission to that. And I don't know the back end of uh, worldwide, the COVID Tracer app, how safe that is. Mm -hmm. Likewise, I, I made a request to the Official Information Act about the genetic, because it is genetic material collected in the PCR tests. What, what happens to all the material collected then? Um, you know, who tells me that it's not being sold uh, like in ancestry.com? You mm -hmm. know, if you didn't tick the little box, do not share after your ancestry thing then your genetic stuff that you've passed on is sold to the highest bidder. Those are all questions that with critical thinking uh, that you have to ask yourself. So the official information act is, was very, very, you know, I got a reply very well packed and uh, it's almost impossible to share it with anyone. And it's just, it just tells me that per region it is disposed by the regional waste, uh, you know, hazard waste uh, companies and 
who knows? I haven't I haven't followed up any further, to be honest. Um, and I just that's excellent questions, though. I mean, we do need to know that there's a pro massive privacy issues involved in all of this. Um, and of course, any medical um, condition or medical treatment that you have is your own private information. So when you allow yourself to be issued with a vaccine passport, you are actually disclosing that information and it's no longer private. So that's what they are forcing people to do through the use of, of this passport for the sole purpose of discrimination. Yeah. Discrimination against people for their health choices. It's, it's absolutely shocking that, uh, that we're at this point, um, um, to be honest. Of, that's right, it's, it is, I, I said it is. I mean, I'm just, you know, having this, <laughs> this image of, uh, people, you know, utterly uh, unhealthy people sitting inside a restaurant and the person just doing their daily exercise, walking or whatever, walks past and they are not allowed in that restaurant because they haven't had, I mean, Lud, just imagine that, just imagine. Mm. Yeah. I, I see that at some countries in Europe, I think in France and in Switzerland, um, where these vaccine passports have been implemented as um, including to all restaurants, you know, as you said. And so the way people have responded to that is to have picnics in the streets together, you know, and while the restaurants are empty, you know, everyone's outside on picnic blankets eating together, um, you know, in order to stand up against just this absolutely unacceptable level of segregation that is coming, you know, coming down from our leaders. <laughs> it's just, but it's great to see that kind of creativity, you know, people actually standing in their power and saying, well, hey, no, actually, that's not the world I want to live in. And I'm not going to be dictated to you based on an agenda of fear, you know, um, of, of which is probably one of the biggest things that causes stress and anxiety and affects health, <laughs> your health negatively. That's right. You were asking, you were, you were mentioning that in the beginning, um, but just quickly to what you just said, they, uh, many people around the world are actually burning their passports in solidarity with everybody else. You know, they say, okay, you want to do this to me, but I, I'm not having it. I'm not having the segregation. That is also within your human rights to do that, you know. Um, but it is, Asha, what amazes me, it's such a long story, such a long history of, of creating segregation. I mean, this is hundreds and hundreds and thousands of years leading us to building an image of somebody that we have to hate or dislike or yeah. exclude because of, mm -hmm. uh, it's always the same, because of color or because of religion or because of speaking a different language or cultural background. That's got to stop. It has to stop. And what amazes me that, I mean, you know, my passion for uh, new styles of leadership and, and all this, that we were, I always, I felt we were nearly there. You know, if I think back of 2019 and wonderful um, books by, you know, Brené Brown and new leadership styles and Frédéric Laloux who wrote a book about um, reinventing organization, which is all, you know, with no top-down management style. <clears throat> The U Lab, the MIT U Lab that I that I took part in for a few years, which is all about leadership, and it's phenomenal. It is all inclusive, and it is intelligent. And it uses your body, mind, spirit intelligence, and that was the talk, you know, in management styles. And then we get locked down, and we get pushed and pressed and coerced, and what the heck and and people and people accepting that and saying you're you're the government or you're the the medical expert and i blindly trust you honestly i i'm just in disbelief yeah. i'm just really in disbelief 
Yeah. Well, I think, I, I mean, I, I trust that we will get to the point where more and more people are going to wake up to what's happening. And whether that's through harm to themselves or harm to people that they love, um, that's a really unfortunate consequence, um, you know, that many people are going through right now. Um, and we need people and institutions to wake up, to stand up and to actually grab onto their ethics <laughs> and their morals um, and stand up and be those leaders again because you know you're so you're so right you know we were it felt like humanity was heading in a in a positive you know new expanded direction and then the boot comes down on the face like George Orwell <laughs> says you know um, so we really shake up you know this is this is a huge shake up and wake up for many people um, and every every single person can do that uh you know where people like you and i we're not alone there's many out there uh you mentioned organization uh company owners shop mm -hmm. owners restaurant owners yeah. they can they can do that they can say I tolerate you with or without. I'm that's fine with me. You know, this is a free zone or or whatever. They can put a sticker in their window and say it's a free zone. A company they can say it's my company, my shop, my business. This is how I think, and um, and and this is the uh, right that I once again claim. Uh, you know, as a business owner. Definitely, definitely. They have an obligation to their employees and to their self, you know, and we are all neighbours, you know, these are our neighbours and our friends and our families. So we, we need to be thinking about each other and really assessing what we're being asked to do yeah. um, and what that actually means for us and our children and our future. Um, so definitely employers are a big one because the fact of the matter is the government cannot mandate a medical treatment. They can't. So they are using, they're using the media, they're using yeah. every, every means that they can without actually doing it. And that, that includes putting pressure on employers and, and in turn employers putting pressure on their employees. Now yeah. it's emotional manipulation that's yeah. happening and people need to be able to see that and and stand in their power so mm. I, the one thing that I really wanted to talk about today we already mentioned critical thinking you know which is really the the, the ability um, your ability to be able to step back and assess information as in, a, in an in the most neutral way that you can and really attempt to understand where that information comes from who, it, who it's coming from, who paid for it, you know, what, what, uh, what conflicts of interest do they have? Um, and, and, and that can help you really to, to understand and assess information. And in terms of critical thinking, there's two things that I think are so important. Looking at alternative information, there's experts all over this planet. They, there's no scientific consensus or, on everything. That's, that's, that's a fabrication, you know, that comes through your, your, the mainstream media. There, there is a lot of information and there are a lot of whistleblowers. And, and the onus, I believe, is on us to look at all of the available information. Don't allow ourselves to be narrowed down into this is what you're allowed to consume. Look at everything and try to understand it as best you can with your mind and your heart. <laughs> and the context of what you're seeing, you know, happen. Um, and that's how you will build the best picture that you can. Um, and of course, things are always changing. Science is always changing and evolving and we're always learning. So we need to be uh, flexible to change when we need to change um, and not dig our heels in, but learn. You know, it's an evolving process. So that critical thinking is just so important. And the other thing about critical thinking, I just want to go back to people's personal stories, people's voices, people's testimonies. 
they're just as valuable. They're just as valuable, you know, and that really, really needs to be understood because, yeah, because, because when people speak from the heart about what's happened to them, it really gives you an insight. And when you've got hundreds of people saying the same thing, if you don't learn from that, well, you're missing out on a huge part of the story. Yes. Now, with the um, two things that, that are coming to mind, Asha, with, um, I'd like to point out to people to be, to be observant. Um, when people, your near ones, dear ones, when they decide to have this medical treatment, they call the, you know, the jab, um, and shortly after have side effects mm. of whatever, it is important to notice, just to notice whether you want to report it to our CARM, uh, so, you know, MedSafe CARM, or, or not. Usually your doctor should actually report it, but it is really important to keep track of that. We were so quick of announcing every single case, case, COVID case, as I mentioned here, are positive tests. They're not, never means they are sick uh, and have the disease. It's a positive case. That's something that, that also needs to be reminded. We were so quick of being really alarmed with about every single case. And why are we not alarmed with every, with every single side effect that people have? Why do we have, why does that, why, do, why is that so disapproved or so, you know? And, and um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, with, with that all said, I think one of the other principles that I would really like to convey to people is personal sovereignty. Yeah. Personal sovereignty of your body, your mind, and your spirit. Those are yours. They're not for anybody else to mess with. Yeah. Um, and that's just fundamental. That is absolutely fundamental. You are born into this world with your personal sovereignty. Now, it might be something that you have to stand for and that you have to uphold because there are things and there are people that will try to interfere with that. We, we know that that happens, that happens all the time, but you need to stand in your personal sovereignty. This is your body. This is your mind. This is your spirit and you have a conscience. You were born with a conscience. And that is yours to exercise. You were born with free will. That's also yours to exercise. So, you know, along with those rights or gifts, however you want to perceive them, come responsibilities. Yes. And from my perspective, the fundamental responsibility that you have is to uphold your own personal sovereignty and your conscience and to support others in doing so. So all of the rights that you have, whether they come in the form of the um, United, uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights or the Bill of Rights, or the rights, the personal sovereignty rights that you were born into this world with, your responsibility is to ensure that you respect those rights in others. Yes. And, and I know you mentioned before, Barbara, regarding this human rights question of when do you give up some of your rights for the collective? Yeah. You, do, you have no obligation whatsoever to allow your rights to be violated for the benefit of other people. Yeah. Your obligation is to stand for your own rights and stand for those, those exact same rights for other people. Um, and so we need to not allow the manipulative idea that you are doing something for the collective that is not good for you and that breaches your own integrity and your own conscience because that's some of the messaging that's coming through you know um, and that's that's actually a very very twisted version of what your rights and responsibilities are and that's worked that's worked before 
That twist version has worked before. It's not so long ago, 50, 60 years ago in my country of birth. You know, uh, yeah. You know, something else that comes to mind, Asha, you mentioned media before and the campaign that they were running. That, we've got to remember, that is not journalism. Mm. Journalism has their own code of ethics and standards. Right. And that is to report the truth to what we're seeing here is, uh, you know, political parties, uh, like on social media, uh, our Labour Party advertising vaccine campaigns, I don't even want to call it that, our, our, our head, headline in the last, um, our New Zealand Herald had this big image of the, um, you know, arm up, which looks identical to the war image. Uh, 50, 60, 70 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that is not journalism. That right. journalism, ju uh, in, if I want to, uh, that is my, tr my source of truth. That's how journalism was created. I must be uh, able to open the paper and read everything that we are talking about, pro and con, I'm, that's journalism. Mm -hmm. And not, um, big fat propaganda on the head uh, on the headline that's not journalism so those journalists they haven't done their job they're they i don't know what what you would call it puppets or whatever but mm -hmm. they haven't done their job and to do their job that is also a, a human obligation that's a responsibility Absolutely. And, and and we have to hold them to that we have to hold them to that and likewise Whenever somebody does speak up, a doctor speaks up, or a lawyer speaks up, a nurse speaks up, for them to be silenced and deplatformed, and you know this new cancel culture that we have, that is a fundamental breach of every possible right that any of any anybody in humanity's history has ever fought for. That's right. That's right. Yes, absolutely. That is the role of the fourth estate, you know, the media, is to keep government in check and to ask the hard questions and to provide, you know, the thorough investigative journalism. And it's completely absent. And it's, you know, it's actually mind blowing that the New Zealand Herald is basically running a vaccination campaign, propaganda campaign. Yeah. Or the government and the pharmaceutical company. Yes. You know, um, that's just a, beyond, just beyond comprehension, really, that we've got to this point and that it's so accepted. Um, and that, that right. there's a lot of people that, you know, are, are still very swept up in that, but it, it's actually immoral. It's completely immoral and unethical. Um, you know, against, and, against professional ethics. That's right, yeah. Absolutely. It's a similar, I mean, professional ethics of any uh, health consultant of any uh, medical profession is hopefully that is still valid. First, do no harm. Mm. So if I'm not sure of what I'm doing, uh, whether, you know, whether there are side effects with that or uh, risk benefit, uh, um, report doesn't quite come out in in the favor of the benefit that is my obligation as a as a health professional to say no i'm not doing that that's right um yeah. first do no harm mm -hmm. but yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah tough times and we really we need need people um and I, as i said you know it, it's not it's not just people, regular people who are waking up. We need people in these institutions to realize the level of manipulation that's happening. And I, and, I, and I do believe many of them do. They just need to grow the courage. They need to grow the courage to stand up, you know, and that might, in many cases, might mean walk away. You know, it might mean blow the whistle, but they need to find a way, you know, to actually correct this um, because where it's heading is just further and further down the hole, <laughs> really. Um, and so it must, it, we must also, that's, I think one of our, every single one of us, that is uh, another responsibility we have 
to make those voices heard, those people who have been, I mean, I, I, I see that in my own work that, pe you know, we send people to the doctor, to a doctor if they have any side effects and, and they're being ignored. And that is being ignored when you, when you know that something is not right with you. I mean, how much worse can it get, honestly? Yeah. How much, how much worse than it can it get? And, and, and that really, I mean, we really have to remind, remind people of that. That is, a, that is somebody neglecting what they came here and what they can pay to do, which is providing medical assistance. Uh, right. yeah. Yeah. Mm. all right well shall we finish with a few maybe um just a few few points for people so that they understand yeah. a, a little bit more about um about their rights and 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 feel a little bit more empowered you know um at one of our recent meetings we heard from um people who were in employment situations where they really just didn't know what to do um and what was what was okay and what was not okay. So just to clarify some things for, for you all, um, and we'll, we'll put links to these where we can and um, provide more information in the next video as well. But the first and foremost is that all medical treatment is optional. All medical treatment is optional. You cannot be coerced into a medical treatment that you don't want. So know that know that you can say no that you are perfectly entitled to say no that is your right no matter what anybody says um one one thing comes to mind asha that um the your 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 employment contract we mentioned this before your employment contract is unless your employment contract gets rewritten with something else in it that's a that's a different matter but otherwise the employment and what and when it comes to what possibly is going to be coming into into the game here uh occupational safety um you know the old osh clause so if you're not feeling well um then stay at home now that is something i i think we should we should uh, ask for that we have more um, uh, paid sick leave or you know if especially this is something if it is in, com in, in combination with with the flu or with a spreadable disease or of some sort then yes so tell, tell your employer that this is what's happening uh, and then stay home until you are not infectious anymore and you're well enough to come back to work. That that would be taking care of of people, right? Um, and not saying no. In order to fulfill our occupational safety standards, you have to be injected with this stuff, um, which doesn't prevent spreading and doesn't prevent infection. <laughs> um, and then you fulfill our occupational safety standards and you can come back, back to work. Anyway, yes. yeah, sorry, yeah. you were on a, you were on a, no, that's, on a point. That's, that's exactly right. Yes. Um, uh, so, you, but, you know, and, and this all being said, there are attempts to undermine all of this stuff, which is why it's even more important that you need to stand in your power. Um, so you do not have to disclose your health information to anyone. So if your employer asks you, if you're vaccinated or not, or about any medical treatment that you have, you do not have to tell them. Mm. Now, I have seen that um, on one of the government websites that if your employee doesn't tell you whether they're vaccinated or not, that the employer can then assume that they are not vaccinated. Now, we're, they're getting into very dodgy territory here because it, it's discrimination. Um, and, and would also be making an assumption about someone's medical information. So, you know, they're very, on very, very, very shaky legal ground. But the bottom line is you do not have to disclose your health information to anyone. Um, and in regards to employees being pressured to vaccinate, your current employment contract stands and cannot be changed unless both parties agree. 
which means you and your employer both agree and it becomes a feature of your contract. Mm. So, you know, you can say, no, you don't agree. Now, what they are doing in some instances where they are trying to say that this particular role is not suitable for uh, an unvaccinated person, basically they're saying that they can reassign you to another area within the same uh, company. Now, I think that's probably will end up being being highly questionable as well, but, but at the moment, that's basically what the government is saying. New contracts are a gray area. So you need to be aware and read your new contract. If there is a new um, job that you're taking up, you need to be aware about anything requested in there. And, and if there is um, a request to be vaccinated, perhaps go to that employer and tell them um, you know, that it is that, that you don't want that in your contract. Um, the other issue that we talked about was informed consent. You must be given informed consent if you're going to participate in a medical treatment. And that means being informed around the risks, being provided with information around the risks, the cautions and the effectiveness of that treatment. And now, not last minute, give you, you must be given enough time to actually think it over. Yes, yes, that's right, yeah. Yeah, and, and I'm, I, I think we can quite clearly say that that is not happening. Um, people are not being given the, the full information um, around this vaccine in order to make decisions with informed consent. Um, but so those are just a few, a few of the key points really um, to, to keep in mind, um, you know, that you do not have to agree to do anything that you don't want to do in regards to a medical treatment um, yeah. being a key one. It's a, you, you said the word, it's a very uh, shaky ground. It's a very slippery slope that, that, um, that we're, you know, that's opening up or is opened up for us. And when I hear, when I hear discussions of, well, if people, if, you know, people can decide to not have this jab, uh, but then let's refuse them treatment if they, if they then catch COVID. How absolutely utter inhumane is that to no. even have that in your mind? So, so if you arrive uh, with lung emphysema because you've been a lifelong smoker, um, let's not, it's your own fault. Let's send you away from hospital or or you, uh, you're a marathon runner and you arrive at the hospital with a broken ankle on from you. No, it's your own fault. I'm not going to treat you. How can we even? Yeah, you, yeah. it's very you know? bizarre, really, isn't it? The, um, the level of emotional manipulation that turns people on each other and how successfully they're able to divide people. And as you mentioned before, a group of people find a group of people and blame it on them and people's yeah. attention yeah you know really becomes manipulated and fixated on, on that you know to the absolute detriment of of our society I it mean, is mass it's mass formation it is uh there is a, a professor of psychology in belgium professor desmet and maybe we can talk about that uh, next time um, and and he he he's also um, he studied statistics, so he's good with figures as well and psychology. And and he looked at what what is needed in a and and that always results in totalitarianism. Um, uh, and what is needed? What are, what are the preconditions to to create such a phenomena as mass formation? And it's very very interesting and i have taken a, down a few points when i listened, heard him speak the other day so we'll talk about that but yes when you when you notice that you to, turn around and always i i told my my two sons i've got two sons mm -hmm. as kids i i i taught them you know if you point your finger at somebody that's your fault and i said look there's always three fingers pointing back at you so always always be aware so where is my part what part do i play in this 
and you always in, in any situations in in your life you always have a part to play uh, yeah yeah cool yeah uh, well i think we should finish there it's it thank you so much barbara i think we've, we've gone over our time a bit but next time let's get stuck into the new zealand bill of rights and um yeah. you know and some of those other things you mentioned and I just, my message to everybody is to move in love and keep hugging each other. And, um, and don't believe for a second that someone is not worthy of your love because of their medical, you know, decisions. Um, you know, if we truly respect each other, we won't allow fear to dictate our relationships. And we won't allow this government um, to, to, to basically, um, kept, you know, take us down the garden path of division because that's not what we want for our country. So always come, always come back. And you mentioned that the importance of the heart. Always, when it, where, any situation where you notice emotions coming up, just take a breath, notice the emotion, don't push it away. Just try and transform it. Just let it go. Emotion is is in motion. Mm -hmm. uh, let it go through you, focus, you do a couple of belly breaths, your diaphragm, heart breaths, and just give yourself that moment longer to decide before you decide, and then re respond and not react, respond. Yeah, beautiful. But yeah. thank you, Asha, for being brave, being one big, courageous heart, and um, yeah. Thank well, you, good Barbara. Mission. Yeah, and I really look forward to our next um, next chat and we'll keep this going and um, keep encouraging people to stand stand up for themselves and to know, you know, know that that's the right thing to do is to follow your conscience and, um, you know, stand up for each other. So um, I'll